today uh, we're going to take you through at the Grande Pacific Model Railroad how we set up switch machines for installation. Uh, I hope this process makes things a little simpler. Uh, also get away from the expense of buying any extra parts or anything that may uh, run up the bill on installing switch machines because in my case when you get finished doing this with the decoders and everything it, the expense does add up so anyway you can cut corners along the line and just save money what you see in front of you is what you need at least the way I'm gonna do it to get it done what we're gonna start with first is the uh, basic setup of the tortoise switch machine uh, and it, this is described in their instructions. You bend this over about at uh, not 90 degrees, a little something a little less, because you're going to come up here and put a bend about right here. And then you're going to put in the floquel, like so. Floquel, I think it's called. Floquel. Uh, and then you're going to stick it through here. And then you want to place the wire in here. And you're going to take your screw, stick it in here, and you're going to screw this down tight uh, until that screw head is overlapping on that wire so it can't come out. So that's a completed uh, tortoise switch machine for standard instruct, uh, installation. One point I want to make, if you're like me, these things last forever. Uh, I've got a a large quantity of them and I've been, they've been on three some of them have been on three layouts well when you install it in the switch and you cut it off the wire when you get finished installing it the wires are not reusable again when you restart this is o, O23 piano wire most good hobby stores uh, will carry this I think there's a couple of supply places you can get it comes in a three foot piece uh, and you just cut it off to the length you need but about 03 uh, about 023 uh, is the thickness of the wire and then you can just make up some new wires to put in when you replace the machine or reinstall it what I'm trying to get away from here is when you install this machine these contact points are not really accessible in a lot of cases on a lot of railroads so we're going to get in, I'm going to cut the wires, I'm going to show you what we're going to do, but we fix it up with the standard terminal strip here. This is the European type. It's the small, and we wire every one of our tortoise machines exactly the same. So you'll know if you're on this railroad, and I have it in the book, on the, one of the pages for the wiring information on this layout, what these connections are. So we'll go on and I'll show you what we do with this wire to get it started. Well, what we've done while you were away, or I was away, whichever way you want to look at it, we've cut, made up the wires that we're going to use to hook up every terminal on the bottom of the tortoise switch machine. There are the two leads this lead and this lead, the outside leads drive the motors. This is an internal switch and this is an internal switch. The two center posts are the common or the this would be your in and this would be your out feed to an LED. So you, you're getting or this could be your power in and this could be your two LEDs is the way I work it. Um, it just it's a switch there's a write up there's a part in uh, that tells you about uh, how much you can put across these terminals um, I use these switches right here in my staging yards to kill the track when this when the uh, switch is thrown closed there's a feed that comes off of here for the uh, one side of the power the ground side and that basically kills the track uh, which with DCC is important. The idea here though is we're going to hook each one of these wires up and uh, to the tortoise and uh, 
So it, you'll have a lead to, whether you use it or not, we're going to assume that once the machine's installed, it's not accessible. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to take it, skin the wires back. Uh, we're going to take some paste, stick it in the paste, take the soldering iron, and hey, whoop, got that. And we're going to tint the ends. Okay? I tint the ends on all wire. It's getting hooked up in this nature for anything electronic. You do not want those little burrs running around. Stick it back in the paste. Get a little solder on the tip. We'll make this wire hook up for the motor. So we're going to hook it up here. Uh, and we'll hook it up here. Let's talk about the wire while I'm trying to do this. Now, notice a little bit more solder on the other one, but these are not cold joints. You need to make sure you have flux, the solder runs, and you don't get cold joints. That's a, a, this, is a, this is on 20 watts, 20 watt soldering iron. Um, the worst thing in the world is cold soldering joints. They'll come back to haunt you at the worst time. So that's the motor lead for the tortoise machine. We're going to hook the other ones up and you'll see I use a piece of color wire so I know which switch it is. That's unique to this system. This is 24 gauge stranded wire. Now this one, one side silver, one side's copper but in the world of the the motor it really doesn't make any difference here to have all kind of fancy colors I picked up this wire off of eBay uh, for a song I got three rolls of it 500 feet a piece and I use it in a lot of places for hookups um, it doesn't make any difference no matter whether what how you're doing the hookups DC DCC or what you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. So don't waste a lot of time to try to figure out what wire needs to go where. Hook it up. If it's wrong, all you have to do is unscrew the two terminals, flip it around, screw it back in. And it'll be right. So um, it's not the quote-unquote technical electrical solution to this, but that's where it is. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the rest of the wires, and then we'll do the terminal. Now, we have finished soldering all the wires on uh, that we're going to set up. And like I said, the yellow and the blue, to me, on this railroad tells me, because these three wires right here, the yellow and this wire right here control one switch, and the blue and this wire control another switch. So when I hook this up, I, I have a set uh, procedure as to what this switch gets used and what this one gets used for. This side primarily gets used for LED indications because the LEDs on my little panels where uh, I have them that indicate switch positions for switches that you can't see the points run on a 12 volt, well, they run on a DC system, DC system which is uh, right now around about 4 volts which is plenty enough voltage for a uh, two millimeter uh, LED. In fact, it's too much and I always put resistors on the LEDs to make sure that they don't get overpowered. But this is how the lights change from red to green right here. The, co the, uh, the hot wire goes through the positive side on the LED. The other side is connected here. Go through so that you get the uh, indication of which side is open, which wire, which one you're running. One wire goes to one LED, one goes to the other one. So, and this is the positive. So, this takes care of uh, throwing that LED. Uh, some cases we use this to kill a track. You could use this to um, charge your frogs. If you want to do that, if you want to have hot frogs. This particular layout uses Atlas switches. And our rule here is, if it doesn't 
make it across the frog, then it doesn't run on the layout. Uh, the Atlas switches, if you're familiar with them, are all less, about a little over an inch in length. So we don't run any engines that are that small in wheelbase that don't have the pickups. So now we have this bundle of wires, and we're going to pull it down here like this. Because as good as I am at cutting wire, some of the times they don't all come out the same length. And we really kind of try, you know, try hard to make this all neat. So now we have them uh, all the same length. I'm going to uh, tin all of these wires, and then we'll come back and we'll hook them up to the terminal strip. Okay, we got the wires all tinted. Uh, again, I cannot overemphasize taking the trouble to tint your wires. Anytime you're making any type of electrical connection like this. One of those little loose frayed wires going over touching one of the other terminals or touching something else, uh, like for example on the connection on your power sub booster on your system, can be disaster. So take a little extra few minutes and make sure those little wires don't get cra crazy and go somewhere else. Um, this is your typical, what they call European standard terminal, and it is of the small variety. They come in different sizes. Now, what I'm going to do is take this wire right here, which is for the motor. I mount these, the connections, the power feeds go on the bottom from whatever I'm doing, so when I mount this I put these feeds in from the top. So, and if you start left to right on my railroad, the first two terminals on every one is the motor. Um, draw up a diagram, put it in your track wiring book for your layout, and that's the way it works. The next one is the yellow switch, and you put the two wires into the terminal and tighten them down. Now, the next one is the yellow wire for the yellow switch. And you can get all kind of creative on what you do with these things, but they're there. Make it so you can utilize them. And we'll continue on uh, the last two wires go in the end. We have a blue wire to put in next, but we're going to put these in here just so we get to the end. So we'll leave a space for the blue wire. And we're going to hook up this terminal here. Now in the great design of this railroad, the next two uh, connections are for the DC voltage, straight DC for the LEDs gets fed around the layout. Uh, you put it, input it here and if you need it, it's out here. Not all these get hooked up, but if I'm working an area at the top of the layout where we have a lot of this, I'll go ahead and run the 12 volt wire around and put it in here. The next two or the whatever area I'm working in, if you need an extra place to split out track uh, bus w wire, in some places I have an awful lot of connections and so forth. I'll lead it, put a lead in from the negative and the positive on the track bus, and that gives me a place to hook up uh, various and sundry things. In fact, you could feed this device from there. This is the decoder that's going to control that switch machine. So this is what it looks like now. We can go a little, we're going to go a little bit step further here, and I'll come back. Okay, while we were away, we went and got some wire ties, and we uh, got a little fancy here. Clean up our act, and we're pretty much ready to install it. The idea here, very simply, is that this machine is going to end up in a lot of times places kind of difficult to get to. Definitely not a place you can solder to. Whereas this terminal will allow you to mount it under your railroad in a place that you can access the terminal uh, to get to all the functions of the Dakota. The biggest part of this expense is this terminal strip, which you can get from all uh, all electronics 
uh, depending on how many you buy, you can get it down to a dollar sixty cents a piece. Uh, if you just buy, I think it's ten, it's two dollars. When I was doing this layout in the beginning, when I had a lot of things to do, what I would do is get 12 machines and sit here and do 12 machines at once. Cut the wire, set it all up, and then put them in a box and keep them around until I ran out. Then I'd do another 12. We're, this installation for this machine is, is we're making an add-on. So I didn't have any ready, so now i got to do a couple to take care of the current project. So I figured we'd get into it. The last step you want to do, and I think uh, this gets into one of the most critical. This is double stick tape. See the thickness of it. Good old Walmart product. You take it, cut it here, and then you put another piece here. And when you get up underneath that table, and I have to say, I can't remember too many machines, or if any, that I had help installing on this layout. This is invaluable when you stab and switch machines by yourself. You peel the paper off when you're about ready to do it, and then you carefully line up the hole. Now the trick is to put a light above, make sure there's plenty of light so you can see it from underneath. And you get pretty good at stab and switch switch machines after the length of time I've been doing it. Um, then I'll hold it in place and run the machine back and forth once it's sitting in there just held with the tape and make sure it's correct. If it's not, you can usually pull the tape down one time and then stick it back up. Uh, I will say on plywood the tape does become pretty much uh, non-sticky after a short period of time. It's not a case of you've got multiple endless number of tries. Uh, when the machine's in place, I'll take a screw and put two screws, catty corner, into the bottom of the plywood and that's it's permanent. Leave the tape on there. Doesn't make any difference. And then that's its permanent mount. We'll show you this as, in, as we get into the installation. But now this machine's ready to install. If you're just doing 12 volts, all you have to do is hook, hook a switch to here. It does have to stay on. These are stall machines. So it has to have voltage on it to keep it all the way over here. When you turn off your DCC system, when you're running them like I do, you can hear them back off, or when you turn it on, you'll hear them all engage. Um, some people even like to have a device to cycle them, but we won't get into that. Uh, so that concludes what we're trying to show you here on the, this part of the installation. Where we're going to go from here is uh, I'm going to get into setting up a decoder for this machine in the next segment. Then, then we'll go to the actual physically uh, setting up the place on the track for installing it. Okay, now that we've got all this hooked up, what I've done is it's now hooked up to power. Uh, we just used a couple of uh, alligator clip cables to go to the track power. But this will demonstrate uh, what we want to get to the next step. So, as I pointed out before, the terminal 1 and 2 of the motor power, now what I've done is taken these two terminals and I've run them back to the A connection, which is right here. It's the second two screws on the, uh, this is a switch it, and has an A and a B side this is the track power coming in here. The A side is currently with this black wire connected here to terminal 2 and then uh, APA position A uh, it's in the program mode. You basically have to do this to make it remember what you do. So then you take a controller in your hand and you go to select accessory 
excuse me, yeah. Select accessory and you enter the number and we're going to be 290. You hit enter and then it says one or two, you select one. Put the controller down. And I'm not on the uh, tripod right now, so we're going to have to get carried away here for a minute. And you disconnect the jumper. So it's off, and now this should work. Mm, famous last words. You'll never know it, because if it doesn't work, we're going to reshoot it. <laughs> Select Accessory 290 Enter and we'll push 2. Up, oh, didn't run. Select Accessory Enter 1. Ah, there it goes. Um, the first time around, it could be the 1 or 2, depending on which position it's in. You just want to see that thing move. That's all. We worry about getting the right position and where when we mount it up. To change the direction, you can either go into the computer and do it by, you know, switching it in there. Or all you got to do is turn those first two wires around and it's changed. Uh, <laughs> that's just changing the polarity which way. And when you switch them and you plug them back in, if you do it while it's hot, be careful. But you'll hear the motor run because it'll run the other way. Just a little brief quick point here. This side of the switch it, the left side, reports to the computer and tells the computer everything it's doing. If you use the right side and you can hook up a double pole, double throw momentary contact switches to this side, it'll throw the switch but it doesn't tell the computer where the switch is. It's like it's in a whole other country over here to throw the switch. The processor right here doesn't report back to the computer what's going on. So when you use switch its, if you're doing like I do to run a, a program uh, for dispatching, you, you can't use these uh, terminals. You have to use what's called a mini panel or you throw from the controller, uh, the ProCab, regular ProCab R, a Cab 06 will all throw switches. But, uh, but if you're going to do it with a button, uh, you're going to have to install a mini panel. That's easy to do also. I'm going to get into I've already got that tape done, but I've got to go back and review it. So let us move on.